All right, how's it going, everybody? So, yeah, the 2020 NASCAR Cup schedule officially came out the other day. I have it all written down here, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to list all the races off and give my thoughts on it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, of course, we start off NASCAR with, of course, the clash after Daytona. Still, it's still officially a week after the Super Bowl. I would prefer it to be a Saturday race instead of a Sunday race. You know, because let the Sunday be just for Daytona 500 qualifying and just have to clash on Saturday under the lights. Of course, we have the duels during the week are going to be under the lights again. And I honestly say for the clash, I've said it here all along. You want to know how you make exhibition races mean more? Put points on the line. Award points to drivers that finish in the top 10. The solution is right there in front of you, NASCAR. Quit trying to make excuses to avoid it. Just make it happen. But yeah, continuing on, next up, we open a season, of course, with the Daytona 500 back on President's Day weekend again. So then after NAS Daytona, we have a first change on the schedule. Race number two of the season will be in Las Vegas, so this is the start of the West Coast Swing. I like this idea, so we're starting off the West Coast Swing. We have Vegas, race three of the season will be an auto club in Fontana, California, and then race four will be Phoenix, a.k.a. ISM. So yeah, I like the idea of the West Coast Swing. The one thing I would do to it is I would add Sonoma to it too. Or hell, even have NASCAR go outside of the U.S. and go to Mexico. Add Mexico to the West Coast Swing. At Autodromos in Mexico City. And Xfinity has raced at Autodromos. It's where Formula 1 does the Mexican Grand Prix at. You know, um, Xfinity ran there in the mid-2000s. So, you know, it's a pretty good track. I would, I would prefer it. You know, go international, go to because uh, you know NASCAR has a lot of Mexican fans and a lot of Canadian fans too. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. So yeah, after Phoenix, race five will be Atlanta. So Atlanta's gonna be end of March, early April. Honestly, I like that idea because having Atlanta the second race of the season, the weather's just been not there for it. You know, it's just been not that good weather. We've had a couple good years of decent weather, including this year, but. How much longer is that going to last? See, I like having Atlanta move down the schedule a bit, so I like that. Race number six is probably the biggest shakeup here. Race six of the season is in Homestead, Homestead, Florida. So yeah, in other words, Homestead, Miami is no longer the championship race, obviously. We'll get to that in a little bit. So yeah, having Homestead early April, that is an interesting move. I'm going to have, I'm going to be paying attention to that one very well um like early april end of may march you get the idea so yeah that's an interesting one so yeah that's gonna be a race i'm gonna have to look out on the calendar so yeah, we're gonna see how that goes and of course i'm gonna wrap up this mile and a half swing because right after the west coast swing we get a mile and a half swing we get texas again oh yeah texas that's gonna be probably another ass race so then after texas we then go to bristol and then after Bristol, we have our first off week of the season. After that off week, we then go to Richmond, which will be run during the day. So pretty much, so pretty much 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all don't change. So yeah, race 10 after Richmond, we go to Talladega. I like the idea of Richmond in the day, by the way. Because the Richmond night races usually suck ass. But, you know, at, but every time they do it in the day, it's a great race. So yeah, I like Richmond today a lot. I see I get that a thumbs up. So yeah, after Talladega, we then go to Dover. And then after Dover, we get our next big change on the schedule. We get Martinsville right after. And this isn't just any certain Martinsville race. This Martinsville race will be on a Saturday night, so it will be a Martinsville night race. I really like this idea of Martinsville at the under the lights. It's a really good idea. I cannot wait for that race already. I'll have that one marked on the calendar. So yeah, look forward to that one. I know that will be on Mother's Day weekend. So then after Martinsville, we have the All-Star Race. Of course, like I said, you want to make the All-Star Race mean something? Put points on the line. Simplest solution ever. Because if it's just for pride and money, and there's nothing at stake and nothing matters in it, then why should I care? Why should I care about a race that means nothing? Like, you gotta make it mean something. You gotta give people a reason to watch the race. Simple. So 
So, of course, after the All-Star Race, of course, we have the Coca-Cola 600. Of course, on Memorial Day weekend again. So, yeah, kudos there. After Charlotte, it's interesting. After Charlotte, we go to Kansas. So, Kansas is back to, like, start of June. So, pretty much back to, like, you know, 2013. I mean, 2011. When they had a Kansas race at the start of June, and then they moved it up the calendar. So, yeah, Kansas will be start of June. That's going to be an interesting one. So, yeah, then after Kansas, we then go Michigan. And then after Michigan, we go to Sonoma. And then after Sonoma, we go to Chicagoland. And then after Chicagoland, it gets interesting. Because after Chicagoland, we have race 18 and 19 consisting at one track. Because after Chicago, we have the Pocono doubleheader. So, while you are wondering, what is a doubleheader, you may ask? It is very simple. It will be two races happening in the same weekend for points. One race happens on Saturday. The other race happens on Sunday. So yeah, both races happening at Pocono. Both are going to be under triangle format. It's an interesting idea for the doubleheader. I like the idea. The one difference I would have done for this is I would have had one Pocono race consist on the triangle track. And the other Pocono race, I want to run the Pocono infield road course. So aka the Pocono Roval. See, I would have one race beyond the Oval, other race beyond the Roval. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts about in the comments. See, so yeah, and then after Pocono, we got another big shakeup because the 4th of July race will be at the Brickyard, Indianapolis. So Indy is officially moved out of the regular season cutoff. It is now back to being race 20 on the schedule. But 4th of July, hmm, that's going to be an interesting one now. But yeah, see, so yeah, after Indianapolis, we then go Kentucky. And then we go Loudon and New Hampshire. And then after New Hampshire, NASCAR then has two off weeks. Two off weeks. That is very interesting. You know, you know, of course, you know, I think it's great to have a long off time off. You know, give everyone time to, you know, refocus, rejuice, and recharge their batter our batteries, of course, before the sprint to the finish. So yeah, after the two weeks off, we then go to Michigan. And then we go to Watkins Glen. Normally, this is interesting. Normally, we go to Watkins Glen before Michigan. But now it's the other way around. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, then after Watkins Glen, we go to Dover. So, Dover will no longer be a race in the chase. And then we get to our last race of the regular season, which will be in Daytona. Now, Daytona is an interesting one. Because now, one of the reasons NASCAR has Daytona as the regular season cutoff is because mainly when they've had it on the 4th of July, they've had weather issues, which is why they couldn't get a sellout crowd. So they decided to move it now to the almost end of August, early September. And keep in mind, end of August, early September in Florida, that's normally the start of hurricane season. So this is going to be an interesting one. This is a high risk. High risk move without a doubt. Oh, yeah. But honestly, though, I honestly think it's a better track than Indianapolis as the finale. Because have you seen how shit Indianapolis has been? Do you really want that again? But to be perfectly honest, I don't really like the idea of having a wild card track determine who's in the chase and who isn't. But I guess the only reason NASCAR wants to do this is, you know, to back up that quote of winning your in. That winning your in quote. To where, hey, anybody that's like 27 in points can just win their way right in in the last race this season. whoop de do Because we haven't had a driver waste race their way to the chase since Jeff Gordon did in 2012. 2013 does not count. That was just a complete shit show. But yeah, I understand NASCAR's message with this. I just think it's going to be a disaster. Honestly, if anything, I would have preferred the last race of the regular season be either Bristol or Richmond or hell, even Darlington. Hell, I would have preferred Atlanta as the last regular season race. But yeah, so yeah, after Daytona, we then go into the chase. So the first race of the chase, we have Darlington on Labor Day weekend. Yes, they're still doing the throwback for that. From what I've heard, they're still doing the throwback. So yeah, and that will be a night race. So yeah, so yeah we're going to have a throwback race in the chase. How about that? So yeah, and Darlington will be a chase race for the first time in 16 years. Guys, remember... Darlington was a chase race back in 2004, and then they got moved up the calendar. So yeah, we have Darlington, and then we got Richmond at night, 
And then the round one cutoff race is the Bristol Night Race. So Br the Bristol Night Race is now a race in the chase. That is really interesting. So yeah, and so yeah, now we add another short track to the to the chase. So yeah, we have two short tracks in round one in Darlington. I really like this round one of, of the chase. It's a really it's a really well improved round one. A lot better than the round one we have this year. Because the 2019 round one is Vegas, Richmond, and the Roval. I honestly think Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol will be a better round one than that. So yeah, I really like that one. Round two is interesting at the chase. We go to round two, we have Las Vegas. Then we have Talladega. And then we end off round two with the Charlotte Roval. So we have Talladega and Roval, and the Roval two of the biggest wildcard tracks in the chase, back to back. So that is very interesting there. Very interesting round two. You know, and Vegas is now racing the second round. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's a very interesting one. But yeah, let's continue on. So round three, we have Kansas. And then we go to Texas. And then the round three cutoff race is Martinsville. The Martinsville race in the chase will be run during the day. So yeah, Martinsville is now a cutoff race. The last race before the championship race. So yeah, we have three wild card tracks ending off the chase. A Roval and two short tracks. I think we all know Bristol is a wild card track. Bristol's always a different animal at night. That's why that's gonna be really interesting having the Bristol race at night. But yeah, and of course we get to the championship race. It is obviously not Homestead since Homestead, I like I already mentioned, is the sixth race of the season. So this year. Who will the championship race go to? The championship race will be Phoenix, a.k.a. ISM. So yeah, Phoenix will now be the new championship race. The title will now be decided in the desert. Honestly, I really like the idea of Phoenix being the championship race. Like, the race is going to be a lot better at Phoenix now. And usually the chase race at Phoenix is a lot better than the West Coast Swain race at Phoenix. Like, usually the chase race at Phoenix has always been one of the top races of the year. I really like that idea. You know, plus it's a... It, even though it's one mile, it's technically a short track, but they classify it as a flat track. And, you know, NASCAR grew up on short tracks. So, yeah, it's great to have the season end on a short track. Um, one of the things I would have done for this is I would have had the schedule... I would have had the championship race be like a rotating race every year. You know, create parity, you know, have it be different tracks every year instead of the same track every goddamn year. Like, one year I would have had the championship race be a super speedway. Next year, have it be a short track. Next year, have it be a mile and a half or intermediate. And then the next year, have it be on a flat track. And then maybe next year, have it on a row course. You know, that's how I would have do it. Let me know what you would have done in the comments. But yeah, I think we all knew going into this schedule that no new tracks are going to be added in. Because the... Because NASCAR's not able to add any new tracks to the schedule until 2021. So yeah, we all knew that going in. But they were discussing some major shakeups. But yeah. So overall, the schedule... I really like it. I think it's a lot improved in this year's. They actually put effort in it this year. A lot of changes, a lot of interesting races. Like the Martinsville Night Race will be interesting... Homestead early in the year is going to be interesting. The Pocono doubleheader is interesting in itself, along with Daytona's the regular season finale. And you know, the entire chase is going to be interesting as a whole. So yeah, overall the schedule, I'll give it a 6 out of 10, or at least a B plus, A minus around there. A lot improved in the last year, but 2021, I expect new track. I think we expect new tracks to go in. Like, I've heard some rumors that um, Iowa's going to get a cup race in 2021. I've heard Gateway was being discussed. I've heard Nashville Fairgrounds, if they can get that fixed up and renovated in time. I've even heard Rockingham, possibly, too, if they can get that fixed up and renovated in time. But honestly, if we're going to add new tracks, like I say here, I think NASCAR needs more short tracks and more road courses. Like some other tracks I would suggest on NASCAR adding, you know, maybe go to Eldora, go to a dirt track. It will need a couple renovations, but if it's possible, do it. I'd say NASCAR should go to Circuit de Americas in Austin, Texas, where um, Formula One usually runs, and where IndyCar was last week. I would also prefer NASCAR go to like Road America, yeah. or even go to Canada, go to Circuit Chauvin New for the F1 track, go across the border for a change. 
you know, in you know where Xfinity ran for like 2007 to 2012 at Circuit Shield Villeneuve in Montreal. You know, there's a lot of tracks I think NASCAR should go to. I would even say NASCAR should go to Milwaukee Mile. You know, renovate it up and go there. NASCAR should have a race at Milwaukee. Like, hell, I would say NASCAR should go back to North Wilkesboro or Nazareth. I know they would, both those tracks would need a shit ton of renovations to be race worthy again, but if you could put the time and effort into it, I'd say go for it. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on the 2020 schedule. Just my reaction and thoughts on it. So yeah, gonna be interesting, but yeah, that's all I gotta say. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's see how much of a shit fest Texas will be. But yeah, peace out.